Magnets! How do they work? For real this time. So I'm gonna try to explain how magnets actually work. But truth be told, it's an extremely complex topic that I really don't fully understand. However, on the basic level, we can at least talk about it today. So let's go with the, the basic regular old physics explanation. What are magnetic things? So the best way to describe this is going to be twofold. Number one, we need an atom that has free valence electrons. And this is to say that there are electrons on the outside that are unpaired with the protons on the inside. This makes it to where you can have a dipole on this particular atom of things. And what does that mean? That means a north and a south if everything is aligned. And we quickly get into quantum states to where, well, the electron doesn't just sit in one spot. How can you actually have that? I'm not gonna answer that today, but what I would like to do is show you with all of these wrenches what I mean. So let's say we have some iron, which has free valence electrons, but all of the iron is just kind of loosely arranged like this. That iron isn't going to actually be magnetic itself. However, since it does have free valence electrons, it is ferromagnetic, which means we can take a magnet and it will stick. And this isn't just straight iron. This is actually chromoly, which isn't as magnetic as straight iron is. But as you can see, plenty magnetic. This is magnetic. And as compared to, let's say, some aluminum, which is conductive, however, not ferromagnetic, it doesn't attract. So this is alignable. This is not alignable. What does that mean? So when we apply a magnetic field to this iron, this chromoly, it actually will align some of the domains inside and it will create little dipoles and that makes it stick to the magnet. So everything will line up like this, but if the magnet isn't strong enough, that magnetic field or the alignment of these structures, the alignment of the domains, they won't stay. So you take the magnet away and whoop, they all go back to a random arrangement. Now with a strong enough magnetic field or a type of alloy that loves to stay aligned, you can apply a really high electric field, a magnetic field to it, and the domains will actually line up and they will stay lined up. This is like if you have a wrench and you pass this wrench over a magnet a few times and then the wrench becomes magnetic, that is what you've done. You've actually aligned all the domains. And what is one way that we can unalign domains? You can either scramble it with another magnetic field, you can pass current through it sometimes, or you can physically do like that and misalign them. So if you drop a motor, sometimes you'll actually demag it and it won't work properly anymore. Now, the stronger that the magnet is, the least likely, the less likely it is for you to misalign domains with uh, a force of any sort or any flux level. So the stronger the magnet, the more that it is able to withstand trying to become unmagnetized. This is why neodymium magnets are typically a lot harder to demagnetize. Now, getting into curry temperatures and things like that is uh, maybe outside of the focus, but there are some magnetic materials that will withstand a much higher temperature tolerance or maybe a much higher flux tolerance before they get rearranged on the inside. But that is kind of the basic description. We want a material that can be aligned with the domains and it will either be ferromagnetic or it can become a magnet itself. So that's, that's the basic explanation. Let's get into the long explanation. I'm going to try my best. Uh, if any of you are quantum mechanic nerds, then feel free to, uh, <laughs> to, to correct this. But the way that it works when you look at it from a quantum perspective is that yes, you have these, these free valence electrons and it allows you to either align or misalign the domains to them. The ones that have free electrons are either going to be ferromagnetic or conductive. And when you pass a current on a conductor, it creates a magnetic field. 
or if you have everything aligned already in the material, like in the case of a magnet, and you pass the magnet by a conductor, it induces a magnetic field. And these are the same side of the, the well, two sides of the same equation, I guess, as I see, but th these are opposite sides of the same coin. But this breaks down when you look at it from a, a perspective of, all right, so if we can induce magnetism by moving the magnet, or we can induce magnetism by moving the coil past it, there are situations to where if I am moving with the magnet, my frame of reference is, is moving with the magnets and we're passing it by this steel structure, well, well technically, it shouldn't make magnetism. It, it breaks down. The, the classical ways of looking at it breaks down. However, when you get into the quantum ways of looking at it, it actually holds up because if we're moving this way or this way, and let's just say that it is uh, negative electrons that is, that is causing this, it's going to be the negative field that can escape. It's actually a compression and depending on what your frame of reference is, it's either compression of the electrons or it's a compression of the protons or the positive charge within that that causes it, which is kind of weird. Um, at least when we're thinking of something, you don't think that the actual substance is compressing, but relative to me and this magnet moving past this steel, it actually is uh, on the order of quantum mechanics and, and it, it's uh, this is a really hard one to explain to tell you the truth. Um, so l let me just give you an example of a magnet passing by a material that is making it conductive or, or a conductive material that is becoming energized on the inside. So. We, we have these magnets. This is three magnets from a uh, Puller 400 motor, Puller 400, five, 500, Puller 500 motor. And as you can see on this aluminum, this really uh, dusty aluminum, uh, one moment, please. All right, this slightly less dusty aluminum. Um, as, as we can see, no trickery here. The magnets stick to the steel. The magnets don't stick to the aluminum. We can, it, it slides right off. However, here's, here's our rate of drop onto the table. There we go. And if we put it next to the aluminum, it's, it's aluminum, this is straight 6061. It's not attracted. However, that's a little odd. What's going on here? You know, you, you can see that it's trying to flip the magnet around a little bit. It's falling off. Uh, if, I, if I go to two magnets, I think it actually has a low enough profile that it won't flip itself off there we go well it's still trying to but as you can see oh it's it's just going down extremely slow why why is this so aluminum is conductive it's not a great conductor but it is a conductor and as the magnet passes by this conductor it is inducing an electric field inside the conductor. So essentially, coming from the RC world, this is drag brake in, in action. Maybe not in the same way, but we are getting a braking force, a straight up braking force. And, and you may say, well, I'm, I'm leaning it. Of course, it's going slow because I'm, I'm leaning it. But in reality, if we could get it to stick, and, and I would normally do this inside of a tube, but you can't see it inside of a tube. If we can get it to stick, I mean, that's practically straight up and down there. No, no trickery, I promise. No trickery. Well, just look at it. I could do this all day. Uh, so it is inducing a magnetic field inside and the aluminum is saying, no, no, no. You, you can't just do that without some sort of reaction. And so the, the magnetic field is, is resisting. It doesn't want to be forced into conducting. It doesn't want currents flowing around in it. Nothing does. It's not a natural state to be with entropy. And so the net effect is that you get a force against the magnet. Now, the easy way to think about this is that the magnetism is coming out of the actual atoms of the substance and the atoms are influencing one another. 
but it is actually a quantum field that is doing this. The field that is influencing this aluminum that is in turn influencing back onto the magnet is not within the aluminum, it is not within the magnet. It is actually a field that surrounds it. And this, this field from the magnet goes off technically into infinity, but it drops off so quickly that we, we wouldn't normally say that. Uh, you know, the, de the, the detectable field from this magnet with my millitesla device is going to be, you know, maybe right around in here uh, before it drops off so much that we can't easily detect it and the Earth's magnetic field actually swamps us out. And I wish, I really do wish that I understood quantum mechanics a little bit better, even though when it boils down to it, it's not going to help me design motors. But this is one of the curiosities that we really don't fully understand because it is quantum mechanics and we don't fully understand quantum mechanics. We can explain it. We can make formulas. I could make a formula to say, you know, this strength of magnet with this much conduction next to it is going to induce this much magnetic field or induce this much current inside, which is in turn going to resist by this much. And we could actually make a formula that perfectly explains this, can be perfectly predictive of everything. I can make a motor and without even knowing what I need to do to build the motor, I can still predict pretty closely how many turns I'm going to need to get a certain KV out as long as I know a lot of the basic parameters of the motor. You know, the, uh, you know, the back iron thickness, how many poles we have, the strength of the magnets, the air gap of the system. We can perfectly predict it, even though we don't even know how it really works, as ICP greatly put it, that one time magnets, how do they work? We, we really don't know. But at the same time, they still work. We know how to manufacture them. It's almost like a microwave oven and that it just kind of is magical in the way that it produces this certain type of radiation when you excite the uh, uh, mag mag magnetotron, I believe it's called on the inside. Yeah, we, we don't know why it works exactly, but it works and that's good enough for us, right? So if you want to know the really hard explanations, we're going to leave a link down below to the Science, Ex uh, Science Asylum channel. He does a great job of explaining on the basics how magnets work and then going really deep into the quantum uh, along with that moving perspective that I showed you. I really didn't explain very well why that breaks down with classical physics, physics but he does. And then he shows you the equations of why it works with our quantum physics. So if you do want to really nerd out on magnets, how do they work, and we really don't know, his channel is going to be just a treasure trove of information for you. I love watching that guy's channel. He, he does a great job of, you know, having questions that are this tall and then bringing them down and building you right back up to understanding them. So if you do have any more questions about magnets and how they work, leave your comments down below and I'll do my best to pretend that I know more information about this. As always, thanks for tuning in and have a great day.